I'm going to look at an application of Solver that I find very interesting. And in particular, I find it interesting because we don't need to set an objective function. There's nothing we're trying to maximize or minimize. We solve the problem entirely using constraints. Now, it's something that you have no doubt heard of and maybe even played with from time to time. And those are magic squares. So let's look at this problem here. We have um, a three by three magic square. Now, let me remind you that with magic squares, we're going to put the numbers from one to nine inside these squares, but the, the ordering of the numbers is open for uh, choice. What we want is the sum of all the numbers in each row to add up to the same value, the sum of all the numbers in each column to add up to the same value. So these three add up here. And we want the sum of numbers along the diagonal. So this plus this plus this have to also add up to the same value in addition to this plus this plus this. So that's magic square. And uh, we're going to solve that magic square problem using the solver in Excel. So let me show you how we do that. Okay, so I'm going to pull up the solver here. Now I've already set this up, but let's look at this a little bit different and, and look at this and see what's different here. Uh, the objective function, as I've said, the objective function doesn't need to be set up to be anything. Uh, so we could put any cell in here that, uh, that Microsoft and Excel accepts in that position and we don't have to maximize or minimize that objective function to anything. The cells we are going to change are the cells that go from here down to here. And those cells are listed right here. We go from B2 to D4. B2 down to D4 right here. So assuming that you know how to put those in, we click and then shift click so we select this right here, then shift, then click and shift click, and that selects all nine of those cells. And we put in the constraints. Now, there are some constraints here that we haven't used yet, that we're going to use here. This constraint, we're saying that the cells from B2 to D4, all nine of these cells, must all be different numbers, all different. Now, how do we do that? Let me just delete this and add it again. So I'll delete it there now. So I want to add to constraint there. So I select these cells, click and shift click. And then we go into here, instead of saying less than or equal to or equal to or whatever, we put different DIF all different there so that's how we put that similarly we make the cells B2 to D4 be integer valued I can show you how to do that let me delete this then we're going to add a constraint so I click shift click to select them all, go here, and I go here down to this integer. We want them to be integer. Okay, there. Now, here I'm setting um, B5 to D5 to be 15. That's B5 to D5. So I add the constraint, and then I select these three um, sorry, uh, I just said that wrong. I select this cell 
here. I'm looking here. Okay, I was. Uh, I'm looking at a row that wasn't right either. Okay, B. Okay, I'm looking at these cells. This cell right here has to be 15. This cell is the sum of these three. This cell is the sum of these three. And this cell is the sum of these three. Let's look at the formula here. I click on here. Oh, I have to close this here. Sorry, close. I may be messing this up. Uh, click on here. Sum B2 to B4. B2, B, okay, there we go. This sum C2 to C4. This is sum D2 to D4. So these have the correct formulas. This is sum of B2, C2, D2. This is B3, C3, D3, and so on. Here, B4 to D4. Okay, so these represent sums, these represent sums, and this is the sum of the diagonal terms B2, C3, D4, this is the sum of diagonal terms B4, uh, I'm sorry, B4, C3, D2, that way. So, these are cells that have formulas in them, like they should. Now go back to the solver, and we have, we're saying right here that these three cells all have to add up to 15. Here we're saying these three cells have to add up to 15. B, uh, B7 to uh, B7 to B8. Sorry, that's this cell and this cell have to add up to 15. And here we have E2 to E4. These three cells have to add up to 15. Okay, so I finally got that a little straight. Now we're going to use the simplex method and uh, let's hit solve and see what happens. Hit solving and um, it's got the answer here. Do okay. So these three numbers add up to 15, these three add up to 15. Similarly down the columns they add and if you check these diagonals, they also add. Now, you might ask, um, why 15? It's because I, I already knew that the answer was 15. So I chose these three to be 15, and, uh, and it worked, because I already knew that answer worked. How about some other numbers? Um, I don't know if I'm going to require all these numbers to be integers and require them all to be different if I can make these cells add up to 15. I'm suspecting that maybe not. I can't do that. So let me do an interesting experiment. To me, this was really interesting when I did this. and I, I did it for the first time only a few minutes ago. And um, so let me close this. And I opened up another sheet where I put the same magic square here. And uh, here, let me just put 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, now I'm going to solve this problem, but with a different set of constraints. Now let's see how I do this. First of all, let me just check because what I have found is that uh, uh, because I'm old and easily confused that uh, sometimes uh, I uh, have a devil of a problem getting uh, the solver to work correctly and usually it's because I'm inputting something incorrect. So the biggest mistake I make in a solver is with selecting arrays of cells when I'm not supposed to. Uh, but let's look at this for a moment. Let me see if the formulas are correct. So this is the sum from B2 to D2, B3 to D3, B4 to D4, that's okay. B2 to B4, C2 to C4, okay, that's okay. 
this is a diagonal, and this is a diagonal. So those those formulas are correct. Now let's look at how I set up the problem here. And I set it up again. I don't even had didn't even have an objective function chosen. Like I said, the value there isn't important because we're not minimizing or maximizing anything. Again, I picked the the three by three array b2 to d4 as changing the variables in those cells. Now, I add a different set of constraints. Uh, the only constraint, which is the same as in the previous problem, is that I'm requiring that all the numbers in the 3x3 three three array here, that they all be different. So I selected all different there. Now, I notice uh, I'm not selecting 15 anywhere in the other constraint. What I do is uh, here I'm saying E2 is equal to B, uh, B5. What's E2? E2 is this. E2 is this. B5 is this. So I'm saying whatever number appears here has to be the same as the number that appears here. Then I say E2 um, has to be B7. So this number has to be the same as this number. And E2 has to be the same as B8. So this number has to be the same as this number. Uh, E2 has to be the same as C5. Okay, I've done the here, C5. Um, and um, saying that E2 has to be the same as E3, that's this. And E2 has to be the same as E4, that's this. Now, I don't think I have set that E2 has to be the same as D5. Do I have that set in here anywhere? I don't have a D5 anywhere here. So I haven't required that this cell has to be equal to that cell. But basically, the principal constraint here is I'm setting um, these three values equal to these two values and equal to these two values. So, are those constraints enough for me to be able to find the problem? That those values all have to be equal, that those sums have to be equal. If I hit solve, and it's solving now, they're starting to put numbers in there, and bingo, look what I got. I get all 15, and if you check, uh, compare it with a previous problem, you say, gee, those numbers look different. They all left up 15. But my guess is you find that these numbers and these numbers are just rotated or shifted versions of one another. So notice here we have 276. Then we go over here. So this is 276. Here we have 492. We go over here and 492 goes this way. So the uh, solutions are related to one another. What's interesting here is that we didn't require that the rows and columns and diagonals sum to 15, and it automatically found that as a solution. And uh, so it's the only solution that I found to this point on the uh, on this three by three magic square where I'm requiring that all of those numbers be different. So my suspicion right now is that there may not be any other solutions. So uh, with that, uh, next time.